Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at DNA sequencing, the Human Genome Project, the funding of the Human Genome Project, and then we'll finish with a summary. So once the structure of DNA was worked out or discovered, the next step for the scientists logically was to develop a method of sequencing the DNA. So in sequencing the DNA, we understand in the process what the DNA is made up of and what instructions it contains. The process of DNA sequencing is the process used to determine the precise sequence of nucleotides in a length of DNA. So remember DNA is there to contain the instructions to make all the proteins of an organism or an organism's body. And the DNA contains many millions and sometimes many tens of millions of nucleotides along its length. And knowing the exact order and sequence of these is what we work out through DNA sequencing. The pioneer behind DNA sequencing was a man called Fred Sanger who developed the Sanger sequencing method. The Sanger sequencing method basically involved synthesizing lots and lots of DNA fragments that differed in length just by one base pair from a DNA template strand. So say this was the original DNA, we would make lots of template strands which were complementary to the original strand and the process basically made lots and lots of different fragments differing by one nucleotide every time just by one base pair. Don't worry too much about how the sequencing works and how you can work out the order of nucleotides. Just understand that the Sanger sequencing method involved all of these different fragments, complementary and template to that original strand, based on different lengths differing by only one nucleotide. Eventually in the process, these fragments are then separated out according to length using gel electrophoresis and the end base is identified. So basically every single fragment that we made had a light or a fluorescent nucleotide on the end where for example A might be blue, C might be green, T might be orange and G might be yellow. And basically as we pass all the fragments through a detector all of those lengths will be covered and then we can work out the order of base sequences. So as all the fragments pass through we get this graph looking like this and we see that the base sequence of DNA strand is worked out. So the shortest one might end on an A, the next shortest one would end on a C, the next shortest one would end on a T, and eventually you get the whole order of nucleotides and you've sequenced that length of DNA. There's an important scheme you need to be aware of called the Human Genome Project. The DNA sequencing enabled the launch of a new project to sequence the entire human genome, the Human Genome Project. So remember that a gene and the genome are two different things. One gene would be a section of DNA that codes for a particular protein. But the genome is all the genes and all of the DNA within a particular organism. So this is what our genome looks like, for example. So the Human Genome Project wanted to work out the entire sequence of the entire human genome. So the Human Genome Project had many aims. One of them was the determination of the entire base sequence of genomes from simpler eukaryotic organisms. So first they worked out the sequence of simpler organisms. These could include yeast, drosophila flies, and worms like C. elegans. So these are much simpler animals than ourselves, and they, therefore their, their DNA was easier to sequence. It also had the aim of determination of the entire base sequence of the more complex human genome. So once they moved from the simpler organisms, they went on to doing the human genome which is very, very big and consists of lots of chromosomes. And they wanted to work out from start to finish the entire order of DNA. It also had the aim in identification of new genes and determination of their location, function and regulation. So we wanted to look at the entire sequence and look at genes that we hadn't seen or didn't know about before. And we might come across a particular gene, whereby we can look at the sequence, look at what protein it codes for, and look at how the gene is regulated by other genes. How active it is, when does it come on, what time in development does this gene become expressed, and all of those questions about that gene. And it also aims to discuss some of the ethical, legal, and social issues that the genome sequencing creates. So we'll be discussing these in more detail in later videos, but it's questions like, should we work out what our DNA contains? Do people want to know? If we did know, will some people get better healthcare than others? Will we be able to afford more personal healthcare? Lots of different questions like this. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.